Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Property Management with today's Landlord Tip. With us today is Brad Sheppy from Minnesota Landlord Law. How are you doing, Brad? I'm great, Scott. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for being here. We have a, a, a kind of a big topic to cover today, and I'm glad you're here to help navigate it. It's you know, The topic is all the different, the various ordinance, rental ordinance changes in the Twin Cities market. And I think if we had three days, we probably wouldn't be able to cover it all, but we're going to talk, talk about the top three to five if we can. Got so, it. so in your opinion, what is the biggest one that's changed here in the last 12 months? Well, great, Scott. The biggest change is that for years and years, landlords across the metro, if you had properties in different cities, could generally get by with one set of rental criteria and one set of standards and lease documents, no matter what city your property was in. Um, well, now the across the metro, cities are enacting ordinances almost annually that add to and are more specific to um, and different from other cities. Off the top of my head, the the most significant one is the city of Minneapolis. Yeah, they've been um, keeping us busy just trying to keep up with all the changes. Um, what specifically comes yeah, to mind for you? So, so Minneapolis has had a logical progression over the past couple of years. They started by dipping their toe in the water by having a specific notice document that's where you need to vote, uh, that all new tenants need to receive before they move in. But now they've added what's called a renter protection ordinance, um, which goes much more into the actual business model of the owner and how they need to make decisions for each and every tenant before they even apply to and move into the rental unit. What do you mean by that? So specifically, the ordinance, the, the policy behind that is the city of Minneapolis believes there's um, a, a group of renters with different types of background that have been prevented from accessing um, rental units particularly because of their background. And so now you have- You mean like criminal background or exactly. credit? Okay. Exactly, those, okay. Are, those are two of the three. So now there's very prescriptive language that speaks to um, criminal background check, um, conviction specifically, um, standards, as well as credit language, as well as security deposit language. And so starting this summer, um, every landlord will have to comply with their new ordinance or they'll be in violation the minute they advertise their unit for rent with the rental criteria so summer of 2020 you if you make a mistake advertising your unit saying so like an example would be like, let's say felons right there's there's, yes. there's limitations on how far back someone can have a felony on their criminal record is that the case correct correct so it's there's, there's actually multiple buckets going from the less serious of a conviction to the more serious of a conviction, going from two years to 10 years. And so what the Minneapolis does in their specific ordinance is, is they say specifically, you, the landlord, cannot deny a tenant access to your unit in their application if their specific conviction, conviction was less than a specific number of years. Okay. And so the language is very detailed and it's it's a little bit too difficult to get to cover right now, but you really have to know what you're doing. Okay. Um and I and I I've I've read some of the language, I agree. Like if you know, we I've been doing property management for almost twenty years and I feel like I need an attorney to interpret some of this stuff for me. So what uh, are there are there significant penalties? Like if someone were to violate this, I mean, there, the, the 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 ordinance does come with civil penalties, and at the end of the day, it all also comes down to your rental license. Okay, you don't want to risk your rental license, and any issue that you do, well, you, you could have a civil penalty, you could have issues with your rental license, and then beyond that, you might run aground of other state and federal laws. But what I didn't cover before was credit as well, and so okay. um, for a long time. Um, Applicants will have a criminal background check, credit background check, and together they'll blend them. And whether that whether or not a specific tenant meets all of the criteria, and landlords typically deny for all of the criteria that were not met. Um, but now, for example, uh, the landlord cannot deny for credit score alone. Okay. They in in Minneapolis, they'll have to deny and have additional reasons that could go into everything from specific information 
within the within the credit check, such as there were multiple collections or there's judgments against them, specific information that is beyond the credit score um, that you'll that will have to be added to denials starting this summer. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, so, so that's a lot like in, in, in there's different tiers, like, uh, if they have a felony versus a gross misdemeanor, misdemeanor conviction and, and up and down that ladder. Is that correct? True? Correct. And there's, and there's, there's a few really high crimes that meet certain statutes that you can automatically deny on high um, crimes and misdemeanors. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> good no ti- joking. Yeah, matter. Good, good, sorry, good timing. Sorry. Good timing. With that. <laughs> but the short answer is yes. Um, so to take a step back from just the, the specific ordinance, um, there will have to be training for a property manager or an owner to really understand how to apply and lawfully deny because a landlord or a management company, you don't want to be in a position where you made a good faith decision, but you denied an applicant and you missed some technicality of the new ordinance. Therefore you, 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 you know, you hit the rocks with the boat and you're in trouble. Um, so it's, it, it likely is going to take more time. And boat owners know when you hit the rocks <laughs> with the boat, it's it's not only uh, time consuming, it's yeah. expensive. So. Yeah, and, and there's there's more to come. So definitely understand the new ordinance, the renter protection ordinance that was passed last year, 2019, um, and starts uh, this summer, 2020. But also stay tuned. So the theme really is, is that this isn't a one-time event of a one new ordinance in just Minneapolis. Other cities are adding ordinances. And Minneapolis already has another one that's coming in 2021 dealing with energy disclosure that has to right. be disclosed um, in advance of the application. And so it's really, you have to either have a relationship with a good um, landlord tenant attorney or with Minnesota multi-housing and trade industry, or you have brokers or someone knows you have to, you have to stay in touch and also understand that if you have properties in different cities, you may consider having different rental criteria. And you'll have to know as well, are there different documents that I need to attach to the lease for different disclosures in different cities? Yeah, and I agree. Like you need to, for the layperson, you know, if you've got, you know, whether you've got one unit or 101 units, you really have to stay tuned to what's going or in tune to what's going on because... I mean, simply Minneapolis alone, they've got enough to occupy like almost one one full time person here. And I feel like each one of these topics is its own show almost to like if you want to navigate the nuances. So what about like other municipalities like Edina, for instance, they recently and I believe November of 2019 enacted a, a rental ordinance Is it November 2019. I actually don't know the specific ordinance, yeah, it was but, something like but that, yeah. uh, I think the theme is, is that um Edina, St. Louis Park, Bloomington, St. Paul, all of the cities, you have to be aware of what they have. And not only should owners be aware of the the ordinances as they apply to their renters, there's now disclosures that may need to be made when you're actually selling your building or selling right. your, your small property um, because of the fact of your rents are at a certain rate, they meet an affordability requirement. And so you also have to be aware specifically if the building's under contract, let's say you're a buyer and you're buying a specific building, um, does that building, is that going to have any implications with that specific ordinance? Well, for example, city of Minneapolis, the truth in sale housing uh, ordinance changed uh, January 15th of 2020, where you now have to have an energy disclosure component. And you know, to be quite candid, a lot of people they're, they're not aware of it and they don't really know what what that really means and what you're supposed to do and, and then what kind of implications that has on uh, saleability and then of course value too so these are these are you know it's not my place to you know to engage in editorial commentary here but there does have a direct and real impact on property owners and you need to educate yourself as to uh, what this means to you in terms of value and then what kind of repairs you're going to be doing to the property, even if you're planning on getting out of the business. So, and, and you know, like like with anything, I say, you know, build a team of trusted advisors who who have been there before and can help you navigate these, you know, these waters. So, so Brad, if someone wants to learn more about this, how do they get in touch with you? What's the best way? 
Well, the best way is to to call my cell phone actually. Okay, um, which great. Is six one two seven seven zero seven four four seven. I make myself available almost all the time, and I also have a website, MinnesotaLandlordLaw.com, and uh, it's pretty easy for someone to visit the website and click onto my schedule and click a time to talk to me that works on your schedule. Awesome. Uh, it's pretty slick. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Brad. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This, this is uh, I learned stuff today, so that's awesome. So I'm uh, I'm Scott Picard with Verde Property Management. Like always, if you want to get a hold of us, the number is 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888. Call or text or online 24-7, verde-realestate.com. We hope this content has been valuable. And like always, if we could be a further service, please let us know. Thank you.